Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chair, real quick, for the record, I'd like to introduce an article by CNN um, from April 22nd, 2022, titled Florida Releases Four Examples from Math Textbooks. It rejected for public schools. I'd like to enter that into the record, and I'd also like to enter into the record a screenshot of one of the bar graphs from the math book that was rejected by the State Board of Education in Florida. So ordered. Uh, thank you. Uh, witnesses, you're actually, what you're getting is handouts of the stuff, the, uh, the items that I just placed into the record. Um, first thing, witnesses, I would like to draw your attention to is the large uh, bar graph that is being placed in front of you. This bar graph is actually from one of the math textbooks that was going to be for Florida adoption. The math, the bar graph that is slated basically states here that it shows the differences among age groups on the implicit association test that measures levels of racial prejudice. Higher scores indicate stronger biases. This is a measuring of racial prejudice by age. By age. Um, this is an example of a math, no, this is math now. This is an example of a bar graph being used in a math textbook that was slated for adoption in the state of Florida. The State Board of Education, under the, under the, the law that was passed by the legislature dealing with critical race theory in curriculum and, and, and classroom, classroom materials, excuse me, that actually rejected those materials being in classrooms. This is one of the examples that the State Board of Education actually cited for why this math book was rejected. Um, there's another one in the article set that you see. The, the image at the beginning of the CNN article is, what me, question mark, racist, question mark? More than two million people have tested their racial prejudice using the online version of the implicit association test. Most groups average scores, all between slight and moderate bias, but the difference among groups by age and by political identifications are intriguing. This was in a math textbook that was, that was actually solicited to the state of Florida to be adopted by Florida public schools. So if we're gonna talk about curriculum and what should be adopted, should we not actually get to the facts and talk specifically about what is in textbooks? So my question for all the panelists, and everybody can go one at a time, should material like this be in a mathematics textbook that will go before students between the age who might be taking math lessons somewhere in middle school, fifth grade, or even ninth grade. Should this bar graph talking about implicit bias or racial bias be included in a mathematics textbook, not just in the state of Florida, but in any state in the union? Panelists, what is your answer? Not all at once, y'all, come on. Who's going first? I don't mind going first. Thank you for the question. Sure. And I look forward to hearing the responses from the rest of the, the panel. Um, you've given us a, you know, a little bar graph here. Um, this, is supposed, this is out of a textbook? This is out of a textbook. Okay. This is an example of what Florida released about why they didn't adopt a math textbook. Yeah, so do we agree that racial prejudice exists? Ms. Dr. Whitfield, the question is, should this be in a mathematics textbook? Is there math in this textbook? Is, the, is this? Is disseminating a bar graph part of a student learning math? Dr. Wilson, so should we be talking, so about, happens, should we be talking sir, about implicit bias so happens, in mathematics sir. or should we be talking about actual math right. skills? It just so ha I, I would dare say they are learning math skills. It just so happens that, again, this may be something that certain people view as uncomfortable. But ra racial prejudice is, is a real thing. And I dare say our, our students get that, they understand that. So to say that just because something says something about bias or racial prejudice, as the professor has said, like we can't just remove that because we're trying to talk about something that can make some people feel uncomfortable. And I dare say if, if people feel uncomfortable, Oftentimes, there's a reason for that, and maybe that's what's needed to move forward. Dr. Whitfield, I got to go to some of the other people because I got 28 yeah. seconds yeah, left. Sure. This is how congressional hearings work. I would love to have this extended conversation uh, with absolutely. you. Absolutely. Ms. Nossel? I, I saw this graph, and I found it surprising and, frankly, inappropriate for a math textbook. I thought there was a risk that this was going to stoke division, detract from the lesson. 
uh, you know, whether the entire panoply of math books, uh, you know, should have been rejected for this one chart, I think is a different question. Could this chart have been modified or changed? I think that is what we should focus on, where the processes followed, where educators consulted. But, you know, I, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I think, you know, we're all concerned about a polarized environment. We're concerned about how to keep our kids focused on learning and achievement and something that risks detracting from that, I don't think belongs there. Well, I mean, look, I, I know I'm out of time, Madam Chair. I appreciate the indulgence because we're over. The last thing I'll say is um, I, for one, you know, I have young sons. My 14-year-old sitting behind me now. I got a 10-year-old son. I don't want children being, being focused, having their attention distracted from actual learning. If we're going to talk about history, let's talk about history. But if we're going to bring in subjective material into the classroom, that is the problem that has some parents upset in the United States. And that's the concern that we need to think about. That is not a free speech issue because students are a captive audience. They don't get to leave. Adults, we can walk out anytime we want to. The kids cannot. That's why this is such an important discussion to be had. Madam Chair, thank you so much for the indulgence. I yield back. The gentleman